So let's look at graphing equations high quality uh, edition. So let's start with the equation y equals negative x squared plus 4. Now at this point in algebra the only way you have to graph this equation is to pick some x values and plug them in to find the corresponding y values to generate some points. Later on in the year I'll show you some techniques that you can use if you know enough about this equation and you know some shortcuts you can graph the equation much quicker. But you can't do that yet. So let's pick some x values. And when, Now normally on a homework or a test I'd tell you which x values to use. I'll give you a range of them. Um, but if you had to do this on your own, you just pick some range. Make sure to include some negatives and some positives. And um, get enough data points you can actually get a picture of what's going on. So like 9 or 10 or 11 data points should work. Um, now let's just uh, go from negative 3 to negative 2 to negative 1, to 0, to 1, to 2, to 3, and that gives us 7 data points, which should be enough for this graph. Um, don't just do like 2 points or something for a graph that's, you know, y equals x squared plus 4. That's not going to work. Now, I need to show some work and uh, how I figured out my, my values, so I'm going to create what's called a process table. And the process table has the process that I use to find the y values from the x values um, in them. Now you don't have to use a ruler to make your table, I just had it handy so I'm just going to use it. Um, this is going to be the column for my x values, this is going to be the column for my y values, and in the middle goes my work. And my work is basically this equation. Negative x squared plus 4 is the expression I have to use. And so I'm going to go from negative 3 to negative 2 to negative 1 to 0, and it's much better to use lined paper so you don't have this wide line, skinny line, wide line, skinny line, and you can be more consistent and it's easier, you don't have to draw horizontal lines, so use notebook paper to do this, don't do what I just did. Um, and so now I need to plug in these values, and notice how I put them in order, I just didn't like randomly put them there because I'm hoping that there's going to be some kind of pattern or something I can follow um, in the y's or in the simplifying of the expressions. Um, and if I just do it all kind of random willy-nilly, I'm not going to see any of that. So remember from algebraic expressions, I told you that you replace the x with the number in parentheses. Anything outside the variable just gets added on. So that's how I substitute in the negative 3 to this expression. And when I follow the order of operations, I square negative 3, it becomes 9. But I want the opposite of 9, which is negative 9 plus 4, which gives me a negative 5. And then I do the same thing with negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4. Negative 4 plus 4 gives me 0. Do the same thing with negative 1. This gives me a negative 1 plus a 4, which gives me a 3. Now 0 is really easy, because if I square 0, I get 0. And I add 4 to it, and I just get 4. Now I also know how negatives work, um, and how, sorry, ne squaring negatives work, and how squaring in general works. This, these two quantities are going to be the same. So when I add the 4, I'm just going to go back and get a 3. And when I plug in the 2, 2 squared and negative 2 squared are the same value, and so I'm going to get a 0 there too. And then if I square 3 and negative 3, I get a positive 9 either way. Put the negative sign in front, add a 4, and I get the exact same negative 5. So this table has some symmetry to it. And the maximum value is a 4, and the minimum value for these values is a negative 5. So I know my y-axis has to have a maximum value of at least 4, and a minimum value of at least 5, and my x values have to go from negative 3 to positive 3. Now we're going to use a tiny little grid. This is about the size of a grid that you get on a test. Now on a test, uh, I don't always use, the lines aren't always as far apart as this, sometimes they're a little bit thinner, or closer together so you have more, more lines, but this should be enough. I believe it's a 12 by 12 grid, and if my y values go from 4 to negative 5, and my x goes from negative 3 to 3, a 12 by 12 should be plenty. Now 4 and negative 5 are about equally spaced from the 0, and negative 3 and 3 are equally spaced from the 0. So in this case, I can actually put my origin towards the center. And my x and y axis, I don't have to you know, shift anything up or down. If my x values, or sorry, my y values went from like 0 to 25 or something, then I would not want to include this bottom half of the graph. If all my x values were positive, I really want to pu pull this origin down here and so that I only get the first two quadrants. Now this is high quality, so I'm going to automatically go ahead and do the little things that will, I have to make sure I do, like put arrowheads on things that go on forever and label my x and y axes. Now I'm going to think about my scale. And I can have my x scale count by 1, 2, 
I have one, two, three, four, five, six options. And I go from negative three to three, and I really don't want to count by twos because, oh, I don't know if I want to like put a dot there. So um, on that on that little line, because my grid's kind of small for that. So I'm just going to go ahead and make this count by ones. Now, don't forget, you don't have to label every single tick mark. You just have to put a scale on there so that when everyone sees my graph, they know that I'm counting by ones on the x's. Now, my y's, I'm going to do the same thing. So everyone knows that my x, y axis is also counting by ones because I labeled my scale. Remember, I don't want you to label every single tick mark just enough to label the scale, and, and that's more than enough. So now it's time for me to plot the points. Okay, I'm going to plot them in red. So I go to negative 3, and I need to plot the point negative 5, which is down here. And negative 2, I need to plot the point that's 0. And then at 1, I need to plot 3. And at 4, I should plot 0. Now I'm kind of getting a sense of the shape here. That's obviously not a line. So I'm not going to use a straight edge or a line, a ruler, to connect the dots with a single line because those that's not how the points are turning out. And then I have to put a dot here and a dot here and a dot here because my graph is symmetric. So now I have to try to connect these dots. And they're kind of forming a curve. And this curve is actually called a parabola. So I need to try to curve this out. So I'm going to make it as curvy as I can. Okay, and it's got to match the points. Now I'm going to connect the dots and do this slowly. And in pencil, don't use pen because if you mess up, you know, you can't correct pen. I'm just using the pen so that you can see it in the recording. And put arrowheads because this goes on forever. And it does because I can find the x values for negative 4 and negative 5 and negative 6, so on and so forth. So now this graph, I've connected the dots with the curve. So I can see, because there are in-between values that I didn't want to calculate, and I get a good picture of this relationship. So I know there's a symmetry in the relationship. The relationship has a, a maximum y value. I can see the x-intercepts. I can see the y-intercepts. I know it opens downwards and is going to keep going and keep going and keep going down this way. So that tells me a lot about this relationship, negative x squared plus 4. And this right here is a high-quality graph. High-quality, happy face. Happy face.